You're listening to the OCD Stories podcast, hosted by me, Stuart Ralph. The OCD Stories is a podcast dedicated to raising awareness and understanding around obsessive compulsive symptoms. I do this through interviewing inspired therapists, psychologists, and people who have experienced OCD. Welcome to the OCD Stories. And welcome to episode 352. And this one is a special edition of the podcast because it is celebrating 5 million downloads since we started in 2015. 5 million downloads is definitely a number that I never would have imagined. It isn't even what I was aiming for. I wasn't even aiming for 1 million. When I started the podcast, I just wanted to to reach people, share information, share the insights and wisdom and knowledge and expertise from these therapists and researchers uh, to anyone that wanted to listen. And at the time, I didn't expect anywhere near this amount, absolutely anywhere near this amount. So nearly seven years on and the downloads seem to keep growing, more and more people seem to be listening. And I'm sure that's because a lot of you are sharing it with other people you know or therapists sharing it with their clients Um, and maybe it's also more and more people are becoming aware of OCD and then they're finding the podcast and that's a wonderful thing because it means more people are understanding what's going on for them and that that's wonderful so what makes this episode special is that I reached out to some of the therapists and a few select advocates that I'm in contact with probably more regularly than some of the others uh, and I wanted them to share their words of wisdom or words of hope with you guys. It was great to hear what they wanted to share with you guys so I hope you enjoy it and find it useful uh, and kind of join in this celebration with me and I guess from me thank you so much for listening to the show whether you've listened to one episode or you've listened to all of them it means a lot It, it keeps me going keeps me wanting to advocate reach more people shed more light on this experience of OCD uh, and keep digging and searching for answers and exploring and finding new ways and expanding and improving on the old and existing ways Um, so yeah thank you so much for for all your support over the last seven years Uh, it's meant the world to me uh, and obviously I hope you're doing well on your journey uh, and obviously I wish you all the best in life And thank you to NoCD for supporting the podcast. NoCD offers effective and convenient therapy available in the US and outside the US. To find out more about NoCD, their therapy plans, if they currently take your insurance, or to download their free app, head to go.treatmyocd.com forward slash the OCD stories, or the link will be in the episode description. So once again, thank you so much for listening. It it means a lot. Um, I appreciate you. Thank you for, for being you and uh, keep going. And uh, without further ado, here are my past guests. Hi, Stuart. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jonathan Abramowitz. I'm a clinical psychologist at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And my research and clinical work focus on OCD. And I want to start by uh, congratulating you on 5 million downloads. What an amazing accomplishment. And Stuart, you have really made a difference in people's lives with the OCD Stories podcast. Um, so thank you so much for what you're doing for the OCD community. I'm honored to have been uh, a guest on some of your uh, episodes and also to be invited to contribute to this edition. So I'll offer a few of my uh, quote unquote words of, of wisdom, if you want to call them that. And they are um, for folks who um, are, are living with OCD that anxiety is safe and manageable, even though it's unpleasant and uncomfortable. Similarly, uncertainty, intrusive thoughts, they suck, they're unpleasant, but they're also ubiquitous and they're natural and they're not dangerous. And getting past a problem like OCD means learning not to be afraid of these things. And experience is the best teacher. And what that means is that the best treatment for OCD is to lean into these experiences of intrusive thoughts and uncertainty and anxiety and not avoid or do rituals. Exposure and response prevention is the best therapy for OCD. It's a bring it on attitude. Lean into it. Learn that these situations are not dangerous and that you can be present in your life and with your people even when you're feeling uncertain or having intrusive thoughts or feeling anxious. 
I'm not saying it's easy. This is a very challenging thing to do. It takes a lot of courage, but you can do it maybe on your own, maybe with the help of a a, a therapist, a clinician. Um, So those are my words of wisdom. But last but not least, the OCD Stories podcast is an important part of getting past OCD as well. So um, I hope folks will continue to listen. I hope you will continue to be very productive. Thanks. Hello, everyone. This is Cheryl Paul. I am a counselor trained in the Jungian depth psychological tradition. And I wanted to say a couple of things to you. You are listening to this because you are struggling with OCD or somebody that you love is struggling with OCD. And the first thing I want to say to you is my heart goes out to you. I'm sending big hugs. It is a particular type of anguish to be caught in the grip of an OCD spiral. And not very many people understand what that feels like, what that looks like, what it is to live with it, to witness it. So I get it and I'm with you. And mostly what I wanna say is, as we're sitting here, sitting here listening to the sound of water in a creek, I wanted to offer you a lifeline and let you know that it is possible to find freedom from OCD. And that doesn't mean that you'll never experience symptoms again, but it means that when you commit to your inner work, to learning both the -the on-the-spot tools and techniques for how to work with OCD, obsessions, compulsions, intrusive thoughts in the moment, and also going into those deeper layers and addressing underlying areas of pain and wound and trauma and recognizing that OCD and the symptoms of it, anxiety, intrusive thoughts, compulsions are messengers. And they are here to teach us, to guide us, to help us grow. And when we face them, we become a true warrior, a warrior of the spirit. So it is possible, hold on, don't give up, and you are not alone. Hello, OCD Stories, and happy 5 million downloads to Stu and this community. We are so incredibly grateful for this resource. I know I've learned so much from all of you. Um, This is Shiva Rajai. I am so honored to be a part of this very special episode And the piece I wanted to share with everybody today is something that might sound a bit odd coming from a therapist who specializes in treating OCD and anxiety disorders, but I think it's something that I've been thinking about personally and I want to share um, that it's okay to take breaks from treatment and it's okay if there are some seasons and periods in our life where we don't want to feel like we're constantly a project that is a work in progress you can step back from optimizing yourself. You can take some breaks from therapy. We don't want to engage in this long, lifelong process of recovery with an attitude that we have to be fixed or solved. So here's to the long-term spiritual journey that we are all on. Uh, working to tolerate discomfort and become more open and become more um, risk-taking so that we can live our life to the fullest. And if that means that sometimes, some seasons, some months, we want to step back from the work a little bit, I think that is completely okay. And I know that that's something that I have done at many points in my recovery journey. So I wanted to share with everybody um, that I think it's totally okay to also take a break sometimes. We're perfectly fine the way that we are and um, our recovery is a choice we can always engage in. Thanks again. Hi, it's Lara Johnson, the doodler behind OCD Doodles. If I had any words of wisdom, I think I'd say not to compare your own recovery to somebody else's. Um, I know that I got to a point where I was kind of beating myself up a bit that I wasn't recovering quick enough or in the way that I thought I should be. And, you know, once I'd had therapy, I thought, well, that's it, now I should be recovered. And actually it takes time to apply those skills in everyday life. And 
um, as you move towards your values. And so it, it takes time, is what I'd say, and that that's okay, that it doesn't matter how long it takes, you know, every step we take towards those values is a win. Um, and that's how I measure my recovery now, is not by the number of intrusive thoughts. Um, it's not by, you know, how how I feel about the OCD. My My recovery is the number of steps I take towards my values every day and you know that that's not to say that i have don't have days where i don't take those steps and that i have dips but over you know if i zoom out and i look at the big picture am i moving towards my values it's my measure of recovery and i like to keep that in mind now as opposed to being perfectionistic about recovery so yeah that there'd be my words of wisdom is watch the perfectionism and um it's your own unique recovery and not to apply anybody else's standards or your OCD standards um, to that process. And look after yourself. Reach out to this amazing community as well. There's some wonderful people in it that are happy to help and the charities are there for you as well. Hi, everybody. My name is Jenna Overbaugh. I'm a licensed professional counselor working with people who have OCD and anxiety. And in celebration of this wonderful milestone of the OCD stories, I wanted to make sure that you all had some words of wisdom and some words of hope uh, as you move forward in your OCD journey. So I know I've been there myself. I know in those moments it feels so real. And it feels like I can't possibly take that risk. I can't possibly you know, take that bet. The stakes are too high. That was something that I often told myself, Um, you know, the stakes are too high. But we have to keep in mind what happens when we give into these compulsions, whether they are more behavioral or mental. The more we act as though this thing or this situation is threatening, the more we are giving our brain the message that this thing is scary. And not only that, but that we can't handle it. And so, It's really important, it's so important to make sure that you are challenging yourself now in the present moment so that you can contribute to new learning in the future. And so, you know, it's going to take time. It's it's not going to feel easy. There's never, ever, ever going to be a time where it feels 100% right and it feels 100% easy and you are 100% just jumping confidently into the unknown. That is the exposure and response prevention world. Um, but you have to take that leap of faith because otherwise, if we continue to do the opposite and we continue to just do what we've been doing and giving into these rituals, we're just going to be continuing to give our brains the message that this thing is scary, that we can't tolerate it, and that we can't tolerate the discomfort that comes from that. So keep in mind, guys, our brains are overestimating the likelihood of something bad happening while simultaneously underestimating our ability to cope with it. Challenge yourself now so that your brain and your life can benefit for it in the future. You all deserve it. Hey, Stu, it's Michael Greenberg. I just wanted to say a massive congratulations on 5 million downloads. It is pretty astounding to think that every download is a person who either has OCD or loves somebody with OCD who got inspiration or information or hope from what they listened to. It's pretty mind-blowing to think that that happened 5 million times. So, um, Yeah, I just want to say congratulations and more power to you. And also just personally, I want to say thank you for um, giving me and so many other people the opportunity to share new ideas about OCD and really try our best to move the field forward. So thank you and um, hope to chat again soon. Congratulations. Bye. Hi, my name's Johnny Say. I'm a therapist and I have my own history of OCD. First thing I would say is cultivating self-compassion to support us with OCD. Recognizing that you didn't choose your brain, you didn't choose your learning context, you didn't choose the culture, the attachment history, the world you were born in, and you're not choosing these difficult thoughts and feelings. And you're not alone in the pain of suffering. There are many, many other people out there going through this experience. 
And if we cultivate this self-compassionate attitude, that makes it easier to work with the difficult thoughts and feelings. So then the next part is that recovery is very much possible, but it's not about making OCD the bad guy or a disease we have to eradicate. It's about learning skills to handle these difficult thoughts and feelings, to be able to step back and observe our mind and emotion, not be pulled around and controlled by these thoughts and feelings into compulsions. It's about building exposure work around values, the people that matter to us, the things that matter to us in our lives. And it's about tracking progress, about how much engagement we have with those values and those activities and goals. And then the side effect is the symptoms will either become easier or come down or a bit of both. So I wish you all the best with your recovery work. Never give up hope. There's always a chance. You can always have another go. Slip and recommit. Trust your own wisdom. Find a therapist that works for you. Find someone that you resonate and connect with. And develop these skills. Work at it. Practice it. You got this. I'm Margaret Sisson, Executive Director of Riley's Wish. First of all, congratulations, Stu. I want to offer a message of hope for parents and families. If you are supporting a loved one with OCD or substance use disorder, you are not alone. Please know that there are others who are on your same journey. Reach out for support for you and your loved one and know they can get better and live a life full of purpose. This is Dr. Stephen Phillipson reaching out to offer congratulations to you, Stu, for an amazing gift that you've given the OCD community. Congratulations on reaching over 5 million people and providing them with strategic information and shared stories of OCD sufferers. I want to reach out and say that OCD is a condition that can be effectively managed with behavioral principles it can be put into a dormant state such that it does not provide a disruption to one's life process very happy Stu, for all of the amazing interviews that you've given you by far are my favorite interviewer and you have a capacity i think to bring out a great deal of information and a great deal of pleasure in working with you i think that your talents as an interviewer and I have faith your talents as a future therapist are going to bring about a tremendous contribution to the field. Hello, my name is Kimberly Quinlan. I am an OCD specialist and I am the proud guest on the OCD stories multiple times and I am so honored to be a part of this celebration, literally like the biggest celebration of 2022, in my opinion. I am so, so happy for you, Stu. I am so proud of you and the community that you've built. And I hope that you are really letting this celebration land on you and you're receiving all the joy that is being sent your way. I am so, so happy to be a part of this amazing movement that you've created. You've asked us to say a little bit of inspiration or motivation. And as you know, the thing I always say is it is a beautiful day to do hard things. Now, I know that's easier said than done, and it's, but it's still such an important piece of the work that we all have to do if we have anxiety or uncertainty or we're suffering in any way. And so what I want to offer you all, if it's helpful, is just to remind yourself that as you do the freaking hard thing again and again, I want you to be really gentle. I want you to be really kind. I want you to be really respectful towards yourself. And hopefully you can practice that. And the good news is once you start practicing it, it gets easier and becomes more natural and it will feel less icky. And my hope is that it will make your suffering just a little easier and more tolerable. So I'm sending you love. Have a wonderful celebration to all of your listeners too, because you have made this happen as well. And have a wonderful day. Hi, everyone. My name is Alejandro. 
I'm an OCD psychologist from Spain. I have been working in OCD for 15 years. I'm here to offer some words of hope. In all my experience working with OCD sufferers, I have seen so many people overcome OCD symptoms and return to living productive lives and happy moments. So remember, all of you can do it too. Even the most severe cases can find the road to recovery. There is a light at the end of even the darkest tunnel. The advice that I can share with all of you is to continue doing the work even on the difficult days. You must keep moving forward. We are here for you. You are not alone. Hello. Stuart, congratulations on reaching 5 million downloads. That's incredible. It's a number I can't really even comprehend. Uh, so that's totally awesome. This is Michael Tuig. I'm a professor of psychology at Utah State University. I'm also a psychologist here in Utah. Uh, and my work, you know, work with OCD and anxiety disorders. And I, I do a lot of training of grad students and other people how to treat these things. Well, you asked us to share some of our um, insights, and I'm aware that you have clinicians and clients. And I thought, you know, what's one thing that that comes up for me as a person who trains therapists and as someone who works with clients? And I think it's always look at the function of actions over what they look like. So as a therapist, here's my tip <clears throat> to other therapists. When your client says or does something, uh, pay attention to what that means for them when they're saying or doing that. Like, what is the function behind that statement? And always respond to the function of the statement over responding to the literal words they say. And I've found when I do that work, it really, like, it hits way better with the client. And I found the same thing in the people that I train, that when they respond to the function of it, it, it means so much more. So, like, an example would be if a client says you know, I'm scared you're not going to be able to help me. Instead of being like, oh, no, I will be able to help you, you'd say, you know, what's it like to be scared? And then you're hitting up the function. And then for clients, I'd say the same thing. Throughout the day, pay attention to the function of your actions. So if you, anything that you're doing, check with yourself what this is about. And don't look at what it is. But like, what does this do for you? And if you find it moves you closer to things that you care about, fantastic. But if you find that this move is really about maybe like regulating some emotion, looking cool, pleasing someone else, if it's not someone you need to please, you know, then that then that might be something to work on changing. So, you know, punchline to all this is function is probably more important than what it looks like. Thanks. Hi, everyone. This is Dr. Z. And today, I want to remind you that willingness is choosing to be with all those thoughts, feelings, and sensations that are uncomfortable without running away from them, without liking them, without putting up with them. Willingness is more like allowing those thoughts, feelings, sensations to be whatever they happen to be at this particular moment. Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Sam Greenblatt. I run a practice based out of New York City where we offer therapy starting at $100 per session. And I want to wish Stu a huge congratulations on 5 million downloads of OCD stories. What an incredible and well-deserved accomplishment for a podcast that has had an enormous positive effect on the community. And I'm happy to share a few words of wisdom. One of the catchphrases that I've developed over the course of my career is no more logs, right? Compulsing is like adding a log to the fire. Even though initially it might seem like the fire gets a little more dim as you're putting that log on, it really has the effect of not only making that fire burn brighter, but it taking longer for that fire to eventually die down. Compulsing not only makes your distress increase, but it also increases the duration of time that you're going to feel confused, 
have that sense of not knowing what's real or what's not and feeling intensely distressed. The fastest way that you could return to baseline is no more logs, is starving that fire of any of its fuel and letting it naturally die out on its own. The other point that I want to stress is that therapy should have clear and measurable results on a month-to-month basis. In good, effective therapy, you should absolutely be able to expect that every month that you're in it, you're doing better than the month before. And the reason that you're doing better is because of the skills that you've learned in therapy. If this isn't something that you're experiencing, I think it's well worth questioning if you're in the right therapy for you, because OCD is absolutely treatable. And with the right guidance, you can rob your intrusive thoughts of the effect that they're having on your life. Hello, my name is Chrissy Hodges. I'm an advocate for OCD and a certified peer support specialist, providing support worldwide for individuals who are working toward recovery for OCD. I'd like to extend my congratulations to Stu and the podcast, The OCD Stories, on this milestone. Thank goodness this exists to provide hope for people and to let them know they're not alone in this. I was reflecting on what to share for this episode and thinking back on the, I guess it's been about five years since I first appeared on the OCD stories where we had to break my episode up into two different episodes because I talk so much. (laughs) And since then, we've had great discussions of real key elements of recovery. I feel like aren't talked about a lot. And just so appreciative that we've been able to share with you our thoughts and and our journey of recovery on some of these topics. And in reflection, I was thinking about how much I have changed over the last five years, just since the first time I appeared on the podcast. And, And that's what I wanted to share with you today. Recovery it has been a hard journey at times, but I think that in the last five or 10 years, I was able to embrace a growth mindset. And, and really that's what recovery is. It's flexible. It's, it, 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 it can be flexible and fluid and worthy of change over time and growth. And I feel lucky that I've, I've been able to meet so many of you and, and provide support or referrals or be in group together and been able to adapt that mindset basically because I see that I'm not alone. I see myself in you. And I know that you are able to see yourself in my experience as well at times. And I think I have embraced that recovery does not have to be this lonely, isolating, arduous task where I'm just trudging to this finish line and hopefully that's where life will finally be better. Life is here and now. I am deserving and worthy now and so are you. And it's, it's adopting the, the growth mindset that change is okay and being adaptable is really what what makes life exciting, even if it can be painful sometimes. And I know that recovery has lows and it has pain and acceptance has pain as well. But I love that we walk alongside each other. I love that we share stories and that we, we can know that what I've been through, you've been through what you felt, I have felt because that makes that makes the journey worth it. That makes motivation and it really does inspire hope. So thank you for being part of my life as well. Even if we've just exchanged emails or even just knowing that you're out there helps me. And and knowing that there are all these people that have taken the time to come on to this podcast and help us to know that we're not alone. And I am honored to be part of that and to be part of your lives. 
So thank you. Hi, this is Aaron from the Made of Millions Foundation and intrusivethoughts.org. So happy to be sharing a quick little insight with you on this amazing celebration of the OCD stories. Major shout out to Stu for just being a great human being and man, trudging through, keeping these stories going. It's so impactful. So yeah, well, for those of you that don't know me, I've been in the OCD advocacy game for about six years now. And I can assure you all that no matter how much fear I had about opening up about my story and advocating and truly how difficult it was at first, going out and speaking your truth takes all the power away from OCD and it can really, really, really help you with your own healing on your own journey because you're constantly reinforcing your understanding of the condition, you're learning how to talk about it, you're experimenting how you open up with uh, a partner, a first date, a family member, a coworker, a stranger, learning how to do that and testing and optimizing in a way that's comfortable for you is 100% a really, really powerful tool in getting healthier. And then, you know, maybe just one other thought, which is at the end of the day, OCD is about fear. There's some fear that you might not be doing the right thing, saying the right thing, thinking the right thing, feeling the right thing. And the only way to get past that is to accept that you are not your thoughts. It sounds so cliche, but you have to accept that there's a difference between what your brain produces as a thought and what you believe and hold value and believe to be true. So stick with your values, learn to let your anxiety pass, and hopefully we'll see you on on an episode one day. Thanks. Hi everyone, it's Dr. Amy Mary Askin. I am so excited to celebrate 5 million downloads of the OCD Stories podcast, this incredible resource for all of you incredible people. And one thing I've been thinking about a lot is the strengths of people with OCD. That people with OCD are compassionate, creative, imaginative, have a real sense of justice. And although OCD takes advantage of these strengths to kind of take root, they can also be harnessed for your recovery and can just be wonderful attributes on their own. So the same compassion that gets hijacked into harm and checking fears, for example, can also be the motivation for self-compassion and recovery or just used to spread kindness and care in the world. That the creative stories OCD tells us about our world, our safety, or ourselves can be uh, countered with creative ways of responding to the OCD voice or the ability to just write new stories about our futures. And so thinking about things in this way has really um, helped me to appreciate what a privilege it is to work with the OCD community, to help people find that after they throw off the yoke of OCD symptoms, they still have um, these, these fantastic parts of themselves and these values and strengths. So if you're out there, I just want to say to you, um, you are loved, you are valid, you're not alone, and keep going. Hey, this is Sean Shinnick from Draw Your Monster, and I wanted to just congratulate Stuart Ralph and the OCD Stories on 5 million downloads. Congratulations for doing such a wonderful uh, service for the community and for everyone that you've helped. And you would like some words of wisdom, and I have a little bit of a, a poem or a ditty that I've adapted just for this occasion. So... Here is some, a poem of hope. Been struggling with some things. Don't know where you are today. You're counting losses, counting wins. Doubtful is your way. In the darkness, hope is lost and you think you've gone astray. Because one more step, do you pay a cost? Will you lose this day? Hiding out, it's upside down. You're so sick of caustic shade. So dare you make a valiant shift and stare down these monster waves? You nudge your mind and cause a rift and deny them what they crave. Because in the darkness, is hope lost? Or does it glimmer through the waves? Because you're still here standing tall, 
wet, tired, and now ready for this day. In the darkness, your light is found, because grateful is your way. Grateful for the ups and downs and this beautiful psych-out maze. Grateful for your beating heart and how you step through the awful haze. Light is brightest in the dark. Just direct it to find your way. Inch by inch, look back, you'll see the path you now have made. So, been struggling with some things, but you know where you are today. You're counting losses, you're counting wins, but grateful is your way. In the darkness, hope is found, and you faced the breaking waves. There is light because you know you are here today. Thank you for listening to this week's podcast. If you enjoy the OCD Stories podcast and would like to support us with a one-time tip slash donation, please go to theocdstories.com forward slash support. All tips, no matter how large or small, are greatly appreciated. Please subscribe and rate the show wherever you listen to the podcast. And thank you to NoCD for supporting our work. If you want to find out more about NoCD, head to go.treatmyocd.com forward slash the OCD stories or click the link in the episode description. And quick disclaimer, guys, this podcast is not therapy. It is not a replacement for therapy. Please seek treatment from a trained professional. And until we speak, take care.